hype for AI has never been greater. Is AI the next big thing, or is it the new hype cycle that will fade? Well, this is the question I think every investor is probably asking themselves right now, or certainly the ones I talk to. And it's the quintessential question of like, do you sit on the sideline and be patient and stay disciplined? You know, or do you jump in on the gold rush? Because if we don't get in now, we're going to miss all the seed and series A companies that create tens of billions of dollars of value, uh, which understandable. I think there's a reason why we're in the, op- the business of being optimist in venture capital. And so, you know, I think for us and really Thrive in general, we try to get into the psyche of why are people so excited and less about chasing the next deal and more about what's the core value to the customer? What's the product? What's happening? I mean, crypto obviously has had an amazing run and I think has kind of pulled back a decent amount. But, you know, we've been comparing and contrasting how much is AI potentially the thing people are latching on to, like crypto, maybe for the marginal investor a couple of years ago versus how much is it real? And I think just use crypto as an analogy, it was very ideologically driven. So, you know, Bitcoin came out after a financial crisis and it was all about take this centralized financial system and make it decentralized. You know, allow people to take their money anywhere. Don't let the government insert themselves in the financial ecosystem. And really, like, you have to believe in that as a concept to take all of the trade-offs of using crypto. As a consumer, it's a pretty bad user experience. And so when we think about other hype cycles, I mean, if you go back to even the dot-com bubble, uh, when that ran up, I think the, I don't know the exact stat, but and people, I'm sure people on the show will fact-check me, but I think... Microsoft, Intel, Cisco were the top three technology companies in the peak of the dot-com bubble. They were all infrastructure related in some way, and they were 50% of the $3 trillion in market cap in the hype cycle. And so people really latch on to these companies and they can run for a long time when people believe and speculation fuels more speculation. And so at the end of the day, you know, if you invested in Microsoft in 2000, it would have taken like 15 or 20 years to break even on your investment. And so it's hard to really time and predict hype cycles um, and so we go back to is we ask ourselves, what's the core primitives of AI? We don't know them all today, but we can try to figure out what some of them are. And we can really try to understand products. And there's obvious benefits to those things today. You know, obviously all the search that's coming with ChatGPT and the LLMs, but also just like companies that allow you to trigger actions without having to do 20 clicks. Or I mean, for your show, I'm sure you're using AI in some way to edit or create content or something like that. The marginal cost of content production has come down a lot with these tools. You know, people are able to learn more easily with them. I think when these are the foundational questions you're asking because of technology shift, it forces every company to think about what could happen to their business over the next five years that would be really disruptive, or how should we be thinking about re-disrupting ourselves to ultimately take advantage of the new platform? And all the boardrooms I'm in and many of the founders I work with are thinking about that question. And the, the question which really came to me was someone posted on Facebook this picture, put a picture of themselves below and said, is it AI or is it real? And I genuinely was like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not sure. And that's a real realization moment of like where we are today.